Google and MIT just taught AI how to spot the next big trend online without ever leaking what a single person did. Microsoft released a voice AI that can run 90-minute conversations with multiple speakers. Elon Musk is starting a new AI company, MacroHard, while suing Apple and OpenAI for billions. And IBM, with NASA, built an AI twin of the sun to predict violent solar storms before they strike. Big moves, bigger stakes. So let's talk about it. All right, let's kick things off with something that might sound dry at first, but actually hits home for anyone using apps like Google, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or even Spotify. Every time you search for something, leave a comment, or just scroll, those platforms are crunching through insane amounts of data to figure out what people are into. That's how YouTube knows which videos to recommend, how TikTok pushes the latest trends, or how Spotify suddenly serves you that niche artist you didn't even know you'd like. The tricky part is making all of that work without ever exposing what one single person did. And now Google, together with MIT researchers, has come up with a new algorithm that makes this whole process way smarter. It means platforms can pick up on way more subtle patterns, like rare phrases, niche topics, or early trends, while still keeping every single user completely hidden in the crowd. Here's the problem they've been struggling with for years. When you've got a gigantic data set, like every search query ever made or millions of reviews, how do you figure out what's actually important without accidentally outing the one person who searched something unique? If only one person typed it, it has to stay secret. If thousands did, it's safe to share. The old approach for handling this worked but it wasted a lot of potential. Popular stuff like really common words ended up hogging all the attention while rare but still valuable signals got buried. The old system basically gave every item a score, added random noise to protect privacy, and then set a threshold. If an item passed, it showed up in the output. Scalable, yes, it worked with big data systems like Hadoop and Spark, but it wasn't efficient. The heavy items, the ones everybody used, would get mountains of weight they didn't need while the smaller but still useful items had no chance of crossing the line. It's like the loudest voices in the room drowning out the quieter ones. This is where Google's new breakthrough comes in. They call it MAD, Max Adaptive Degree, and a more advanced version, MAD 2R. Think of it like a traffic system for data. When one lane is jammed with too many cars, instead of letting all that traffic pile up, MAD redistributes the excess into other lanes that are underused. In data terms, if an item is already way above the threshold, the extra weight gets trimmed and rerouted to the smaller items. Suddenly, those quieter signals finally have a chance to shine. Here's how it flows. Everything starts with equal weight. The system trims and reroutes excess from the overrepresented items, then fine tunes the balance, adds Gaussian noise, and finally spits out the results. With MAD2R, they even split the process into two rounds. The first round gives a rough picture, then the second uses that noisy data to focus in even better. That's where the real boost comes from. And the numbers are wild. They tested it on nine huge data sets. Reddit, IMDB, Twitter, Wikipedia, Amazon, and even Common Crawl, which has close to a trillion entries. On seven out of nine, MAD2R outperformed the old methods. On Common Crawl, it extracted 16.6 .6 million unique items out of 1.8 billion. That's less than 1%. But here's the crazy part. It still covered 99.9% .9 of users and 97% of all user item pairs. Basically, even though they only revealed a sliver, they captured the entire story without breaking privacy. Now imagine typing one command and getting a full report, charts, slides, spreadsheets, even a podcast, all powered by deep research that beats most AI tools on the market. That's Skywork, and they're sponsoring today's video, an AI workspace built to take the heavy lifting out of research and content creation. From a single prompt, it can generate five different formats, documents, spreadsheets, slides, web pages, and podcasts, cutting work time by up to 90%. Its deep research engine pulls in far more sources than most AI tools. Skywork surfaces up to 10 times more relevant source material than tools like Genspark or Manus, while costing just 40% of what OpenAI charges for similar output. Every result is fully traceable back to the original paragraph or web page, so you can trust the data. 
reports come loaded with visuals, at least two charts per project, making complex information easier to understand. The slides feature is the only one of its kind, deep research presentations with quick or in-depth generation, single page edits, custom or official templates, and export straight to Google Slides or PowerPoint. Skyworks clarification card refines your prompt before it starts. Outputs are fully editable and you can export to HTML, PDF, PPTX, DOC, or CSV. It also connects to premium databases like AlphaVantage, GovInfo, FMP, and SecGov, data worth thousands for just $23.90 a month. For professionals, educators, founders, and creators, Skywork brings everything from market analysis to pitch decks into one powerful, traceable, and cost-efficient AI platform. Now let's talk about something a lot more familiar, AI voices. Microsoft has just released a new open source model called Vibe Voice 1.5b, and the big leap here is how long and flexible it can go. Instead of just spitting out short clips with one robotic sounding voice, this thing can generate up to 90 minutes of continuous speech, and it can keep up to four different voices active in the same session. That means it can actually simulate a conversation. I can't believe you did it again. I waited for two hours. Two hours! Now hey, remember See You Again? Yeah, from Furious 7, right? That song always hits deep. It also isn't limited to plain speech. It can handle cross-lingual output, like turning an English prompt into Chinese speech, and even generate singing. It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Wow. The backbone of the system is a 1.5 billion parameter language model called Quinn 2.5 1.5b. That's the part responsible for understanding flow, context, and when each speaker takes their turn. But voices are trickier than text. So Microsoft added two special tokenizers to break audio down into pieces the AI can actually work with the first one, the Acoustic Tokenizer, takes raw audio recorded at 24,000 samples per second and compresses it by a factor of 3,200. Think of it like squashing a massive HD video into something compact without losing the important details. Technically, it's built as a Sigma VAE with a mirrored encoder and decoder, each with around 340 million parameters. Its job is to make giant streams of audio data manageable then there's the semantic tokenizer, which looks similar but focuses on meaning instead of sound. It was trained using automatic speech recognition tasks, so it learns the content of what's being said rather than just the noise pattern. Once those two pieces finish their work, the diffusion decoder head takes over. It's smaller, around 123 million parameters, but this is where the fine-grained details get added back in. That's what makes the voice sound natural instead of flat. It uses methods like classifier-free guidance and DPM solver to make sure the generated speech feels clear and human. For training, they used something called a context length curriculum. Basically, the model started with short stretches, about 4,000 tokens, and was gradually scaled up to handle 65,000. That's what allows it to keep conversations flowing naturally for over an hour. The main language model controls dialogue flow and turn taking, while the diffusion headlocks in consistent speaker identity and makes voices expressive. Microsoft even highlights emotion control here so the voices can sound lively and not monotone. Community testers say you can generate multi-speaker conversations with around seven gigabytes of GPU memory. So even a mid-range graphics card like an RTX 3060 with eight gigabytes of VRAM is enough. And since it's fully open source under the sort of MIT license, anyone can grab it today from Hugging Face or GitHub. So what we've got here is one of the first open tools that can produce long, expressive multi-speaker audio for free, 90 minutes of coherent human-like conversation, fully open source. That's a big step forward for anyone working with synthetic voices. Now, while Google and Microsoft are pushing forward on privacy and voice, Elon Musk is once again making headlines in a very different way. He's starting yet another company, this time called MacroHard. Yes, the name is a deliberate play on Microsoft. Musk announced it on X, saying it'll be a purely AI software company. 
The idea is that since companies like Microsoft don't manufacture physical hardware, AI could theoretically simulate everything they do. It's tongue-in-cheek, but Musk insists the project is real and they're hiring. His AI chatbot Grok even explained it. MacroHard would essentially build specialized agents for things like coding, image generation, and workflow automation, all working together in multi-agent systems powered by Grok. In other words, an AI software company where AI builds and runs the whole operation to deliver tools, XAI actually filed for a trademark on August 1st, covering downloadable programs for generating human speech and text and for agentic AI in general. Though it's not just talk, there's paperwork behind it. Of course, this comes on top of Musk's already long list of commitments, Tesla, SpaceX, XAI, X, political projects, and even legal fights. Tesla's board just approved a stock award worth around $29 billion, 96 million restricted shares, to keep Musk incentivized to stay Given how much his attention is spread thin across all these ventures, MacroHard is definitely ambitious, but it's also another big plate added to the pile he's already juggling. And speaking of legal fights, Musk is also suing Apple and OpenAI. His uh, companies X and XAI filed a sweeping antitrust lawsuit in US federal court in Texas, claiming Apple and OpenAI formed an illegal partnership to stifle AI competition. The argument is that Apple's integration of ChatGPT into iOS basically locks out other chatbot makers and prevents fair competition. The lawsuit seeks billions in damages and a court order to stop Apple and OpenAI from continuing what Musk calls an illegal arrangement. According to Musk, Apple makes it impossible for anyone other than ChatGPT to reach the top of the App Store charts, which is a massive visibility advantage. The suit claims this harms innovation, deprives consumers of choice, and blocks rivals like Grok. OpenAI responded by saying this is just Musk's ongoing harassment. Apple hasn't commented yet, but it ties into a bigger regulatory picture. Apple has already faced antitrust scrutiny for its App Store practices, including a long legal battle with Epic Games and a Department of Justice case accusing them of monopolizing the smartphone market. Some of Musk's allegations mirror those DOJ claims, like Apple blocking super apps that could replace or rival iPhone functionality. EDQ from Apple testified earlier this year that their deal with OpenAI isn't exclusive and that they can integrate others if they want, but Musk clearly isn't buying it. It's shaping up to be a massive showdown, both legally and in the court of public opinion. And while Musk is busy with lawsuits and new ventures, IBM and NASA announced something very different, but just as impactful. They've open sourced Surya, an AI model built to predict violent solar events, like solar flares and coronal mass ejections, that can disrupt satellites, power grids, GPS, and even the internet. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory has been recording the sun nonstop for 15 years, but making sense of that mountain of data has been slow. Surya changes that. It was trained on nine years of SDO data to create a kind of digital twin of the sun, predicting what it will look like an hour into the future. Its architecture, a long short vision transformer with spectral gating, handles those massive 4,000 by 4,000 pixel images efficiently, even learning things like the sun's odd rotation patterns directly from the data. The results are strong. Current systems give about an hour's warning before a solar flare, while Surya extends that to two hours and improves accuracy by 16%. And beyond flares, the team also released Surya Bench, data sets and benchmarks for predicting solar wind speeds, ultraviolet radiation, and magnetic activity, all things that can trigger GPS disruptions or damage satellites. Surya is available now on Hugging Face, GitHub and IBM's TerraTorch, and it's designed so even non-AI experts can use it. In short, it's the first foundation model aimed at forecasting the sun's behavior, and it could play a big role in protecting both space missions and life on Earth. That's all for today's breakdown. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you enjoy staying updated on AI and tech, and I'll catch you in the next one.